Hi, everyone, and welcome to a 15 minute lunch and learn from the virtual smart stage uh, on the topic of preparing for remobilization, where I'm going to cover some key steps that HR and global mobility teams can do right now to get ready for the rebound. My name is Lisa Johnson, and I'm the Global Practice Leader for Crown World Mobility's Consulting Services. I work for a company that helps organizations like yours move their employees around the world for international assignments and to relocate employees and new hires at home and abroad. As I just said, we're a company that helps organizations move people. So the big question we have, and I assume many of your organizations have today, is how do you do global mobility during an unprecedented global health crisis that has borders shut and requires people to stay at home. There's not a lot of mobility right there, is it? It's a big question. And actually, we've learned a lot in the past three months. One thing we quickly learned is that at the end of the day, there are still plenty of responsibilities and actions and planning that require attention right now. And we can divide them into two big categories. One is the now. What are some things that you can talking to your current stakeholders about in terms of assignees or business partners or uh, your teams, yourselves, um, as we respond to today's reality? And the other is looking at the future and preparing for remobilization, because at some point there will be a rebound. So I have to say, and I say this probably every day, what a difference a day makes, or a month, or a week, or an hour in some cases. I'm sitting in Brooklyn, New York, and sometimes it's every half an hour. Uh, things have really changed so fast. Um, and so we've learned new behavior. We've learned new vocabulary. Um, we have gone from having our coworkers who we talk to routinely to, in some cases, at least in mine, I have a, a child who's now my coworker in my space that I normally work in. Um, we have also gone from uh, socializing together in different places to uh, socializing from a distance. And I know that uh, in my house, we spend a lot of time planning for the next social happy hour that might happen on the weekend. Um, using new platforms like House Party or Skype or Zoom or FaceTime. Um, we used to talk about Gen Z or Gen Z as our new demographic shift that's emerging into our workplaces. And now it's Gen Zoom and we're all part of that demographic, right? Uh, and actually last week I heard someone talk about saying, I miss Brexit and I would have never thought anyone would miss talking about Brexit in the business world or in the HR world. Um, the good news is that in HR and in global mobility, we are nothing if not agile. And so it's a professional requirement that's going to really come in handy and probably already has as we're getting through this situation. So at the end of the day, as I said before, there will be a rebound. There's a lot we don't know yet. We don't know the exact time or the exact date, but it's going to happen. We know that China went into lockdown on January 23rd, and within two days, they had their peak of infections. Today, they're opening back up, maybe slowly, maybe in different pockets, but some people talk about you know, new traffic jams uh, starting to occur a little bit in Beijing, uh, and we know that people are going back to work. So China's experience shows us that staying at home and lockdowns can work. And at some point, we're going to go back to our core businesses um, and maybe even some new areas of focus that are emerging right now uh, that will continue after this is over. And so we want to be ready to move fast. And I want to talk to you about some ways that you can be ready to move fast and support your business partners. There are some great conversations and actions that you can be taking right now to get ready uh, when it comes to meeting the business needs um, that will require relocation or global mobility. There are also key actions and support for people who are currently on an assignment, and we don't want to forget about them, and I'm going to mention them in a minute, too. So for a short time together here, I'm going to pull together some of the highlights that our teams at Crown and many organizations like yours and our clients are focused on as they prepare for the rebound. Uh, there are a number of conversations that you can be having around remobilization with these stakeholders. So just starting at the 
top left with your business partners, I'm thinking about the different stakeholders that you might be talking to. Em employees who are currently on an assignment, also employees who are in the assignment pipeline. And I'll talk about that in just a second. Your suppliers and partners, they're going through this unprecedented moment and their businesses, certainly if they're involved in the mobility world, are really shifting or slowing down or changing. So checking in with them, seeing how they're doing and what's new and what's available in terms of what they can provide is a really critical conversation to have. The global mobility team that some of your organizations have. Uh, and immigration. I'll talk about that in just a second because that's such a critical conversation to be having and one of the places where there's a lot going on right now, believe it or not. So let's just look at some of the, the, the ways to start these conversations and what we're hearing from HR and global mobility right now um, in terms of these stakeholder conversations that are taking place. Uh, with your business partners, I think one of the things that surprised me almost in the first few weeks as we were starting to shut down in different parts of the world at different stages was that business partners were already kind of ramping up and saying, hey, when we can open up the borders, when people can start moving, I've got a long list of people in my pipeline that I want to know that you're ready for. Um, so one of the conversations that you really need to be having right now is with your business partners around which roles need to be filled when remobilization happens, but not just a long list of people, but uh, a prioritization of that list. Because on the day that things do open up for your organization or for your the country where you're located in, uh, it doesn't mean that everyone in that pipeline can start moving right away. That would overwhelm the system within your organization and the suppliers around you. It's not re it's not realistic, right? So looking at prioritization of that list, looking at which people from which locations going into new locations, that country combination, maybe there are some places that are going to open up sooner than others, right? Um, but the key is to have your list of wave one, wave two, wave three, plan A, plan B, and we've all got really good at that. But to me, that's one of the, the highlights in terms of planning for uh, the rebound and remobilization. The second one that I want to focus on is immigration. And as I mentioned before, it's one of the busy, busiest areas in our organization and one of the busiest uh, aspects of uh, the mobility industry right now during this time. Um, it's very interesting. So I talked to our immigration team and said, you know, give us some tips that we can share with HR around things that you can be doing right now. And one of the main things is that HR and project managers need to meet to determine new timelines for upcoming transfers. Um, and with that, those new timelines can really help you start assessing the cases in order to develop case strategies. Um, the immigration team actually can proceed with a lot of paperwork right now um, for visas and work permits. Uh, and there are countries that are being very forgiving and very generous with extensions that need to happen because you have some people overstaying their visas because they can't leave the country where they are in, right? Um, but you can also start filling out the documents and application for labor and immigration authorities right now in many locations. There are several immigration and labor authorities that are partially working remotely to process these applications. And some are accepting online applications as well. So I think that what's really key is to realize that even though we're facing these travel restrictions and closed consulates, the first phase of a work permit process, like filing the petitions with the labor and immigration authorities can potentially be prepared right now. And that way, once the borders do reopen and the consulates are fully operating, these the, any company that's already doing this will be able to be ahead of the system, be in the queue, be in the line, and um, really avoid the backlog that's going to be inevitable at the local authority level. So I wanted to spend a little bit more time on that right here because I think that's really key to keep in mind. You can get the, all those, a lot of paperwork processed. And some companies are using the fact that you can still apply for green cards right now as a recruiting tool for the H-1B and other visas right this minute. 
So don't assume that just because travel restrictions are in place and borders are closed, that you can't be working on this critical aspect of a relocation or a move. Uh, immigration is the first thing you have to do before anything else starts, right? So um, why not get started right today? And so that would be a great conversation for you to be having. Another area that I really want to focus on is assigning mental health. Now that's a big focus for Crown this year with our clients, but let's add in the stress of being away from home during a global crisis. So imagine that you, and maybe you're on your own or with your family, uh, were offered a job in your organization to move to another part of the world or another part of the country, and you've packed up everything, you've said goodbye, you've arrived in a new location, great work opportunity, and suddenly the pandemic starts and you are in lockdown, you're inside your home essentially uh, and can't leave, but you definitely can't travel back and forth to your home location. So here you are in a situation that is normally stressful at some level, even if you're highly motivated, and some of those stresses are right there on the screen in front of you, but now you're in a new location where you don't necessarily have a community. Um, I think about right here in my home in Brooklyn during this time, I have four or five grocery stores right around me that I know where they are. I wave to people on the street, even from a distance, and people in my building are looking out for each other and checking in on each other. Imagine being in a new location, new language, new place to live, and uh, right at the start of your assignment, this happened. That happened to people all over the world. So looking out for people's mental health, being really hands-on in a remote way is so critical right now. And I want you to maybe take a minute to think about that with your own organization and with some of the teams to think about what are ways to continue to uh, reach out and make sure that uh, these employees are are uh, getting the support that they need and feel supported by your organization. The second group of assignees that I wanna think about are those who are in the pipeline already. There were people in your organization or many organizations who had already packed up their stuff, said goodbye to everyone. Maybe their things are in storage or on their way to their new location and suddenly they can't go. And we call this a little bit the long goodbye, right? Uh, and that can be an added stress. So there are things that people can do to start getting ready for their new assignment. And interestingly, language training, which often people say, I don't have time for that. Well, you have time now, probably, and it's offered virtually. So we're seeing a real uptick in people taking language training, doing their cross-cultural training and pre-departure training, which is very commonly offered in many policies, but not always uh, authorized because there isn't time for it. So now there's the time you can prepare people to hit the ground running when they do go. And cross-cultural training also deals with stress and anxiety and can address this anxiety and stress, have someone to talk to about this long goodbye period as well, where you were so excited to go and uh, then it got put on hold. Um, and then preparing for the actual moving day, there are, we offer virtual home surveys where an employee can, with their iPad or their phone, can actually do the home survey of their household goods and be ready for moving day. Um, and we encourage people to join virtual community groups, maybe in the new location, where they can talk to some of the expats and other people living there and get to know their community where they're going to be living in many ways. So these are just a quick list of things that can be done. And one of the last things I want to share with you is just thinking about the global mobility team. And if your organization doesn't have that, the HR team that supports mobility, your organization. Teams really need to have the same script to help manage messages and keep current assignees and future assignees um, calm, right? So it's really important to develop those communication strategies together so that people are hearing a consistent message from your organization. Um, and the other is something that I mentioned a little bit earlier, which is we have to be more hands-on now than ever before, even in a remote environment. So coming up with ways to uh, be uh, as high touch as you can when you can't touch anyone or even be in the same room with anyone is our challenge. But I think it's something that we will be really good at uh, as HR professionals. And to remember that emergency remote working is not the same as official remote working. I work virtually every day uh, in my organization, but 
everyone now, even if they were used to be in an office, are working virtually. So it's really critical to set up new ways to motivate people, to communicate, to engage people, and not just fall back on the, the approaches that you've taken as a leader in the past. And I want to leave you just with a, a great message from Johnny Taylor and Sherm, which is, you know, to make sure that you take care of yourself and those around you. And I think that these are great messages for us to keep in mind um, during times of high anxiety. Uh, we can also get stressed out. And um, so we need to just remember to, you know, assume well-meaning misunderstandings and to be more communicative and, and really just try to be mindful of what you can control, what you can't control. So today here we are and we find ourselves in this unexpected situation we could have never thought about right at the, you know, in December of, of 2019. And here we are and it's April and we're um, trying to find new solutions and reprioritizing what we're working on. And fortunately, HR strengths include agility and flexibility. And I think that we are going to be real leaders during this time as a result of that. So. Thank you for sharing your lunch and learn with me today. Uh, I am Lisa Johnson from Crown World Mobility, and I encourage you to send me your questions or your comments. And I hope I've given you some food for thought and inspiration as you think about actions you can take now and in preparation for the future as we think about the remobilization uh, of our organization. Thank you.